Hello, in this video we're going to look at Vandermond's identity which has to deal with uh, uh, combinations and the reason that we're going to look at this is this is going to help us when we calculate the mean and the variance of a hypergeometric distribution and so Vandermond's inequality says that this holds where this is the normal combinations you know where it'd be you know m plus n factorial divided by r factorial you know times m plus n minus r factorial you know that standard formula and we're going to give two proofs one more of a sort of a statistical proof and the other I'm going to say more mathematical but that's just my opinion and so the first proof, if, if we look at this, let's assume that we have M men and N women. How many ways to choose R people? So how, you know, how many ways can we choose R people from M men and N women? You know, we're not looking at gender specific. It's just this. It's M plus N choose R. That's the answer. But now if we think about it a little bit differently, um, so that's the answer. But we could also think about this choosing K men and R minus K women summed over all possible K. You know, zero men, one man, two men, three, etc. And, and then the others made up of women. And the answer to that is, is this. You know, it's, it, it's the product rule summed over all possible ways to do it, which is this quantity. Um, and so thus, you know, these two are equal. And that's, a, that's one valid proof for this. Um, now, for our second proof, we're going to need a couple notes before we jump right into it. And that's the binomial theorem that says if we have this quantity here raised to a power, then that equals this, uh, this sum. So it's also this polynomial equals this polynomial. And these are what called the binomial coefficients. And it goes from 0 to m plus n. I'm not going to prove it. I have a video on the binomial theorem and the binomial expansion, the general binomial theorem, etc. If you want to go you know, search that under statistics math. Now the second piece that we need for the proof, the second proof, is that the product of two polynomials. So if we have two polynomials going from 0 to m and 0 to n, you know, we have different coefficients, um, this product can be written like this, where it goes from 0 to m plus n, and then the inners is, is this sum, you know, and then each r. Um, now there is one little caveat here that there could be like a coefficient I mean, the coefficient in front of x for this polynomial goes from a0 to am. So if at any point in time this sum, we get an a, you know, subscript greater than m, then the convention is that, that, that you just make it 0. And the same way here. So b, you know, goes from b0 to bn. So if one of these b's has a subscript, greater than n, we consider that zero. And that's what I'm saying here. And so these two equations equal. And um, we're just going to use these as facts. And it's actually not hard to show, but I th just for the length of the video, I think we're, ju we're just assuming it's fact. So then, if we look at um, this, this first equation, so this is just a binomial expansion of, you know, the 1 plus x raised to the m plus n equals this, okay? But since this is raised to the m plus n, it can be broken apart into this. And then each one of these written in a binomial expansion here and here. Now we have the product of two polynomials. So we're going to bring in this second point. And so this um, equals the, you know, from 0 to m plus n and then this inner sum um, based on the second point. Well, now, if we look what we started with and what we have, and we look at the respective coefficients, 
you know, in front of the XR. These are equal, and so if two polynomials equal, it says that their coefficients have to be equal, you know, in front of the, the respective, uh, you know, X coefficients, you know. And so this is saying, look, we have an XR, we have a, a, zero, a sum from zero to N plus N, so it says this coefficient has to equal this coefficient. So for when we're comparing coefficients, we obtain the results. That this combination equals this sum. And so that's a second way to prove that the Vandermond's inequality. So that's all I have for today. And we're going to use this in the next video on uh, finding the mean and the variance of a hypergeometric distribution. So I hope you liked it. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.